Now, imagine person where you be saying that in they actually bring man and woman together for them to form a good union. And then our, the person in marriage not even succeed on top of the matter. Now, what we want to discuss today, we get the author of how the matchmaker marriage actually fail. She and a person, uh, where don't you count for inside different things as regards to healing and recovery relationship coach and therapy, now she be. Now, her claim to fame, now the fact that she don't share a story of how she beget a Pekin at the age of 19, uh, 14 heartbreaks and 15 abortion before she marry. Now, join me, welcome, Lara Kundaisi inside the house. Good to have you. Kunda Yisi, right? Kunda Yisi. Kunda Yisi. Yisi. Yeah. All right. Good to have you. Okay. Good morning, Lara. Good um, morning. The matchmaker, how the matchmaker's marriage failed. Uh, as we don't talk, matchmaker, we know say matchmakers now people where they bring one person and another person together. Yeah. So you go expect, say, first where they join people, in safe now experts for this kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, but the, stu the, the title of the book alone, they make person, they wonder how the matchmaker's marriage failed. But first of all, if we get to know you, Lara Kunda Yisi, tell us a little bit more about yourself. Okay. Um, Lara Kunda Yisi. and recovery and she has already read my story mm -hmm. my story is that i had a child at 19 14 heartbreaks 15 abortions before i got married and then afterwards the marriage crashed so and i wrote a book about it explaining what went wrong my childhood and all of that yeah all right um now you don't actually tell us uh, um, about you and some of the challenges where you actually go through Having a pekin at the age of 19, yeah. I'm going through 14 heartbreaks and then 15 abortions where you don't come outside, talk, say, and you'll be actually um, do. Now, talking about this book, how the matchmaker marriage fail. Yeah. What inspired this book? Is it from your experience or what? Yes, I actually, it's about my life story. From when I was born <laughs> till like last year. You know, so, and I wrote it because I wanted to help a lot of people not go through what I went through. You know, I, you know, um, when you're a therapist, you understand that um, most of our dysfunctions are from childhood. Our childhood is a start. You understand? So, and my story was that, you know, after I had that child, you know, my father used to abuse me, um, you know, criticize me, who go marry you, who go, you know, that kind of thing. And then I wanted to prove him wrong, that I go marry, I go show this man. And that was the greatest mistake I made. Because that was where the addiction to relationships and marriage started from. You know, so that was why I could have 14 heartbreaks. Because if I see one man tell me, say, I go marry you, you know the aim was marriage. So if I don't hear marriage, I don't be me with that. So when that person breaks up, instead of me to wait, heal, before going into the next one, I don't go wait. Because the end goal is not marriage. So that was where the baggage started from. So of course, you know that, so getting married was for the wrong reason. Because he was, there's a chapter in my book titled, I Married to Prove Daddy Wrong. You understand? So after you come marry now, what next? Because you were not equipped for that marriage. You just wanted, the wrong motive was for that marriage. So automatically, it just had to crash. Interesting. Yeah. Now, if you, if you don't mind, Mika, I would ask, I would like to ask, um, how, how long ago um, this marriage has been crashed? How many years ago was this? Um, three years now. Three years now. All right. Now, they try and look how peculiar this is to modern day marriages and relationships, particularly relationships now. Yeah. When we compare them to the things where they happen now, where they happen before in the times of our parents. Yeah. You know, the things where you don't go through, the things where you don't experience. Are there similarities as it take be before and as it be now? Uh, well, back then, it's not like they still don't go through what we go through now. Mm. But then, women were not empowered. They didn't know much, you know, and um, they didn't want much. <laughs> Even if they did, they didn't have a choice. But now, people, you know, I, I say civilization is a curse and also a blessing. You know that kind of thing. Now, it's a blessing because now you're more exposed. You know what you want from life. I don't want to be caged. I don't want to be, you know, and all of that. So now you are, you can, a woman can say, I'm no longer interested in this marriage. That time, you know, fit now, Ugo, you know, he was the stigma too much that time. Ugo, you know, even get anywhere to go that time. But now you go, you know, you know where to go. You can live for yourself. You can fend for yourself. You can raise your children, and you still, you know, even though there's still stigma attached, but it's not, it's not longer like it used to be. So th I think that that's the difference. Now people are more enlightened. That no, no, be so married to home. Well, I actually salute your courage, really, you. because um, you come outside, bear yourself open, like you just talk everything where you don't actually involve yourself in, and everything where you don't actually go through without caring about what in person think or how they could judge you. Yeah. 
at what point is someone discouraged to tell people, say, yes, I don't do 15 abortion and I'm not proud of it, but I want to let you know? Yeah, it's more like a calling, actually, more than um, what I wanted to do. You know, I, I just had, I've always loved relationships, talking about relationships, but I didn't know that I was going to end up doing this professionally. You know, so it was, um, I think it was after my last heartbreak, <laughs> before I got married, that was years ago, that I, re I had, you know, everybody gets something inside there when they talk to them. You understand, God did, you know, that kind of thing. You feel that conviction that I think I'm supposed to be helping people, you know, from prevent them from going through what I went through. And so I went on Facebook, that was 2012, to share this story. I never even married them. I never even get abortion. Mm. But I just felt that it was what I had to do. Everybody get that kind of thing where you go, no, say, this thing I supposed to do. And it was hard, but I did it, you know. And that was when I started getting following. A lot of people started following me because people could relate with me. So that's why, even though it's still, still not easy, but it's easier for me now. Because I'm not saying this because I want to glorify in my shame or whatever. But the more I say it, the more people are drawn. And when they are drawn, they get healing because that's what I do now. I realized that what was responsible for the breakage in my marriage was that I was broken. I was dysfunctional emotionally. And a lot of us are that. If you're in Nigeria and you averagely are dysfunctional, <laughs> let alone how you are even raised in your home, you know, now try an error they take us do. You know that kind of thing. So then you meet somebody else who also is hustling too, like you. He doesn't even know what is right from, and then two of you can't jump. Now go explode. You know, so that's why right now, what I specialize in helping people heal. Because you need to heal from your baggage. You need to heal from where you're coming from. Imagine having 14 heartbreaks. You know, say, you know how many people don't two join, two join, two join, two join. And now come here. I can't go carry and come meet one person. So you say, he himself, you get where they come from. Everything just scatter. You know, so that's it. All right. Now, now very quickly, make I ask. Uh, you, you, you mentioned earlier, say, uh, you felt like a calling for you. Say, yeah. like, say like a calling, like, um, like saying, oh, God, now you say, make you do this kind of thing. Yeah. Now, we know, say, largely, speaking about the religious side, yeah. now, um, marriage now something where a lot of religious, you get a lot of religious backing to so many people. Yeah. And as we mentioned before, say, um, earlier, women don't get choice. Once you enter, you don't enter. Mm. And then they go tell you, say, ah, even uh, religiously, let's stick with Christianity now, yeah. say, to church, they forbid uh, a divorce, divorce yeah. you know. But now, you don't talk, say, now women get the option to say, look, if it's not working for me, make a come out before I go, before I go die inside. Mm. How you they take balance the two? And the religious side, because a lot of people will come, they will come at you with you playing the religious card. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So how do they balance the religious aspect and the realistic aspect? The religious aspect say, we know they divorce for a family. If you did there, you don't did there with that. And the realistic aspect, they say, one year, two years, you know work, my happiness is better than anything else. Okay. Mm -hmm. Number one thing is I believe in marriage. Me, yeah. I like marriage because, you know, I believe marriage helps in a lot of ways. See, there's even a research that says that people, couples who get married, they live longer than people who are not married. True, you can Google it. If you, are, if you are happily married, there are lots of benefits, lots of advantages and all of that. And I preach love, I love talking about love. But the thing is, when you are unhappy in your marriage, there are so many things that can make somebody unhappy. If money no day now, money go day now, do you understand? If you work at it, money fee come, you know? But if person they beat you, I, I still wrote something on Instagram yesterday, say anything that is affecting your emotional and mental health, they beat you, you go die. Now death be that too. You know that kind of thing. A lot of people are dying. See, people are dead. They're just walking because they are unhappily married. You understand? So I don't believe that, you know, God now wants us to die, you know, because we need to obey a law, you know. And I feel that is a law. It doesn't mean that, you know, some things cannot be, you know, tweaked and all of that. God hates divorce, like they say, but I know that he doesn't hate divorces. Because all of us, we are his children. So I don't preach for divorce. I don't, in fact, a lot of people think now I'm now a divorce coach. <laughs> so they come to me and I'm like, no, we are working this marriage out because your issues, we can't work it out. This one is not enough. I even coach married people because I'll tell you, I don't know how you know go work. <laughs> mm. So these things, experience when I get, make gonna know, let her end this way. You know, that kind of thing. You know, so, but I don't believe that anything that is affecting your emotional and mental health. I have a client that is always sick. She has high blood pressure, she's dying. Like she has gone to surgery like three times because she's on an, on, on. Would you, what would you tell, if you, now you born that person, you think you go tell, you think you go tell them, they just they endure. God no, God no like divorce, they endure. Until she die, you go come and they cry. Hi, or don't come out to, at least make she go rest more. You know, so that's why sometimes you advocate for separation. I'm not saying divorce because people can get back, but work on yourself. 
you know, from here, you to work on yourself. Then we can come back together when we are both fine. But say, make we go die inside that thing, no. I like when you come outside and talk, say, according to research, people where they happily, as in, that yes, is not happily. That is a capital letter. Yes, like you know, to say, Mr. Correct myself. As in, happily <laughs> married, yes. that they actually live longer. Now, yes. talking about your book, How the Matchmaker's Marriage Failed, yes. if person pick up this book, which will be some of the things that they go learn from this book? Firstly, you will learn about dysfunction, or something called emotional dysfunction, childhood dysfunction, you know, how I was dysfunctioned from my childhood, you go learn them. And then apart from that, after each chapter, even though it's my story, after each chapter, there's something called reflections, where I ask the reader questions, you know, like talk about that chapter, how does it relate to your own life? What changes do you want to make? Is this thing in your own life? How can you work around it? And then there's another part that talks about affirmations, you know, affirmations is healing, is helping for the four songs of the heartbroken in the book. It helps to heal people. You know, I am strong, I can do it, you know, I am healed, I am, free of dysfunction and stuff like that, you know. So you go learn, say, <laughs> life is not, even though it's not a bed of roses, you have to be alert, you have to heal. See, I, I cannot wait to preach this everywhere I can. Healing, we all have to heal. A lot of people need, to, if you go in um, Obudongi, a lot of people are on therapy for years. But here, we don't do that. We believe that therapy is for mad people. That is not true at all, at all. Too many baggage is for small. Too many people have been raped. They are stuck. They can't move forward. Some, meanwhile, some people were raped and they are now nymphomaniacs. Some people were, ab were abused. Now you will see he is cheating on his wife. He cannot stop himself. It's not because he, he likes it himself. Do you understand? So those are the things you will learn from. It's how to heal, the journey to healing, to know that this is my problem. Because we don't know. Now, you will just talk, say, oh, women are bad. Oh, little girls get no money they like. You know, they're not ready to settle. Or men, or oh, men of these days, nobody to marry. It's a lie. It can be true to an extent, but there's something about you that's even attracting those kind of people. What would be that thing? You know, so I realized that what was attracting me then was because I was broken. So I was always attracting broken people. So when we come, not to explode be that. So those are the things that you will learn, you know, from that book. All right. Now, um, you are the matchmaker, yes. as, your, as the name tag, where you yeah. get. Um, tell us a little bit about matchmaking. I get people who don't believe in matchmaking, they work. Yeah. And then I've been reading somewhere one time, there's a certain percentage of matchmade people where they actually last. First question where I will ask you now, I know I've said that, tell us a little bit about matchmaking. But then, um, how many people, or how many match matchmade people where you don't do, where you don't marry now so far, since Absolutely. you started this journey? I started matchmaking in 2016. Mm. You know. And since then, till now, no little people now. Mm. And let me tell you why. It's not easy. And besides, the, if you want to measure the success rate, they are not, the factors are not within my control. I don't match make people where people say they like each other. Wait, make them marry you. One parent say then go pray. Say, not be them. You know that I can't control that. <laughs> you know, another person came, family said this, something, something. A lot of factors I cannot control. So what matchmaking does, it's just like meeting people in the mall and then coming together. It does not guarantee the success of that relationship or that marriage. That's another game entirely. But matchmaking increases your chance of meeting people, of, you know, getting to know, meet, you know. It's just like you meet somebody, you go shop right or anywhere, go meet somebody. And then you see somebody, you are, you know, now you guys will get to know each other. If it works, fine. You, you date and then eventually lead to marriage. If it doesn't work, not to work, you know, next person. I like this. Now tell us how we can actually get this book, especially for people where they're actually watching. How can they get it? Okay, um, we just printed it. But one thing is you can call right now. We're going to distribute in bookshop, you know, uh, very soon. But right now you can call 080-606-5540. All right, thank you very much. Your Instagram handle, please. At Lara Kuda, you see. And the Kuda, you make a spell. Mm. K U D A Y I S I. All right, thank you very much, Lara Kuda, you see. I would only talk to Lara Kuda, you see, this morning. She's the author of, the, of, of uh, ah. How the Matchmaker Marriage Failed. And she, a professional matchmaker, uh, amongst other things where she don't do. Thank you very much for joining us thank in the studio. Thank you so much. To enjoy more of this, our will go get videos when you just watch. Press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.